Hey guys, it's me, Africa Hair God, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I go from a wild afro to a polish and sculpt afro puff. I get questions all the time from my viewers and supporters asking me how it is I do my afro puffs, how did I get it so full, how do I maintain it, all of that jazz. So I'm going to answer that in this video, hopefully. So let's go ahead and get started. So this particular day, I had worn this afro puff for a total of three days and I am just going through to re-moisturize my hair. I do not re-moisturize my hair every single day that I rock an afro puff. I tend to rock my puffs um, about three to four days before I go back and re-moisturize, depending on how my hair feels. So what I basically do is just divide my hair into eight sections. So once I have my section, working one at a time, I begin by spritzing the section adequately with water. So I pay most of my attention on the ends of my hair, which tend to be the driest. This here is avocado oil. Please ignore the label. I just reuse bottles and I just smooth the oil on to seal the water into my hair. Afterwards, I utilize my leave-in conditioner. This is the Natty Moist. I am preparing for another review of the Natty Moist, which is why I'm using it. So use whatever conditioner, moisturizer that you like. And here you can kind of see just how well my edges are doing. I'll be doing an update on those pretty, pretty soon. So look out for that sometime in November. So after I'm done moisturizing the section, I just twist it up very, very tightly. And as I said, I had eight sections, so that leaves me with a total of eight twists. So I just tie it up at night, and here I am the next morning. So the next day, I simply undo the twists. I work with each clump and just separate the clump into very, very small pieces. We're not going for definition here. What we're going for is fullness and we want the length that comes with stretching our hair in the twist. So the smaller that you separate the hair, the more fuller that your hair is going to be. After all, we want to get our hair into that afro state so that when we pull it back, it is a afro puff, hence the name. And if you really wanted to rock an afro, this would be a great way to go about getting that full afro shape. All right, so once I have separated my entire head, I will spray my edges lightly with some water. So before I apply my gel, I like to use the Shea Moisture Curling Souffle uh, on top of my edges beforehand. I find that applying this before my gel uh, allows me to cake on a little bit more gel for that smooth look but the curling souffle doesn't allow the gel to make my hair feel really hard or really stiff or really dried out so that's always a plus every time I take down my hair my edges still feel soft um, it allows the gel to work and smooth my hair but it doesn't you know dry my hair out which is not a good thing. So I'm using Eco Styler Gel here. Use whatever gel you like, or if you don't have to use a gel, it's up to you. And again, because I'm going for a puff at the top of my crown, I make sure that I smooth an adequate amount in the back and use slightly less in the front. So once I smooth the gel, I take my medium uh, bristle brush and just gently smooth my edges. All 
All right, so I take a knee high. Uh, for some of you, you may need a thigh high type of stocking thing. You know, it's a little bit longer, so it allows you more length. So I just take it tight around the back. Um, as I tighten it, I slowly move the knee high up to the position where I want it. I found that holding your head down as you tie the knee high or make your puff up to the top of your crown, it kind of lessens the tension uh, on your nape, which is always a good thing. So I just tighten it until it gets into position. And if it feels tight, just kind of play around with your hair, kind of pull at it a little bit just to loosen up so that there's no tension on your edges. And as you can see, it got my hair completely smooth without ripping out my hairline. So with the ends, all I do is tie it in the front once and then just take the ends and just wrap it around and tuck it underneath my hair. And this is the final result. Very, very simple, very, very easy. Uh, not necessarily quick because, you know, there is a little bit of preparation required. But I find that doing my puffs on stretched hair tends to work out a lot better. Uh, my hair smooths a lot easier. I'm just not fighting with my hair. And plus, my hair is just naturally full to begin with, so shaping it is just that much easier. Most of the time, I don't have to shape my puff at all to get it in that perfect rounded shape when I have had my hair completely stretched out. So I hope that helps. Here are the pictures. And I will see you guys later in the next video. Until then, be blessed. Bye.